my first guest is an eloquent and uh, frequent visitor to this show who's obviously going to do something amazing when he comes out here with these cards. He captures uh, our attention with every word he speaks. Would you welcome the one and only Orson Welles? <laughs> that 20 pounds that you lost last year. <laughs> I'll get you And for that. congratulations. Thank you. And look at you. You have dropped about what? But I can't... Losing a lot with me is so little in <laughs> its no, general effect. Of course, and it's very it's just beginning. noticeable. Anyway, I'll tell you what happened to me that made me happy about being 70 years old. 70. 70. 70. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Believe me, it's nothing to applaud about. <laughs> but they didn't I'm, expect you to be here past 50. I'll tell you why, what, what was my good luck. I thought I was 70 last year. <laughs> so I went through all the misery of being 70 a year ago. So this one is free. Well, that was wonderful to have two of them, right? Uh, two, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Celebrity, just let it slip by and... Uh... Oh, no, I hate birthdays, you know. Really? really. Mm. Because you, you, you always think... Wouldn't it be nice if it, it was a lot less candles on the cake, you know? Yeah. As well, it is now, when they bring out a cake with my right number of candles, it looks like the Chicago fire. <laughs> Are there certain parts of, of your life that were really joyous? Oh, yes. There, there are certain parts of almost every day that are joyous. I'm not uh, essentially a happy person, but I have all kinds of joy. <laughs> and there is a difference, you know. Because joy is a great big electrical experience. Mm -hmm. And just happiness is what, uh, oh, I don't know. It's a warthog can be happy. And I don't want to knock warthogs. Why did I pick on them? What about painful times? Enough of those to do. I'm saving those for my book. Yeah. <laughs> Were they usually associated, though, with your work, the pain? All kinds of pain, all kinds of pain. Uh, 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 bad conscience pain, too, you know. That's the worst, or the regrets, the things you think you didn't, the times you didn't behave as well as you ought to have. So that's the real pain. The women in your life are... Uh, the women in my oh, life. Awesome. Oh, They're oh, fascinating to everybody. Now, come on, if you're going to write your own book after... Uh, if you think that I'm, I'm going to write a succession of... Uh, boasts or lies about uh, conquests and that nature, you're mistaken. I think that uh, there's much too much talk and not enough action in the world. Mm. <laughs> but one of your wives, oh, I have envied you so many years for Rita Hayworth. That's one of the dearest and sweetest women that ever lived. Mm. And uh, I guess I did her last appearance with her. Really? Yeah. And we got up and we sang, we rehearsed it, and we did a, a let's take an old-fashioned walk together. And oh. it was just, it, well, it was a, a early, very early 70s, 1977. Before the disease had really... Before yeah, the yeah. Alzheimer's, yeah, yeah, which no one knew. No one realized. They thought they all said, she's a drunkard. Well, I wasn't. never believed that, that she was a drunkard. I, I didn't know about Alzheimer's disease, but I believed that something like that was wrong with her. When that began to happen, I wasn't seeing her. But I was hearing these stories, and it was so foreign to her nature. It was so unlike her. Do you remember how you first saw her? Or, or oh, certainly, in, in a, in a full-page in Life magazine. I, I was in, uh, in uh, South America, and I, I saw that picture and uh, vowed that uh, I was going to see that girl. It was awfully hard to get her on the phone. Hmm. <laughs> Did you also vow that you would marry her? And uh... Yeah, and we were a long time together. I, I think... Uh, I was lucky enough to be with her longer than any of the other men in her life. And uh, she, is, she is a dear person, and she was a, a wonderful wife and an extraordinary girl in every way. And I've never heard anybody, I've, I've never heard anybody who sounds like an enemy of hers. She doesn't have them. No, no. Fiery Latin temper? Well, she's half gypsy, you know. And I've never, she never got mad at me once. 
But she used to throw the stuff around the house a little bit when she'd think about Harry Cohen. One woman, Orson, I wanted to ask you about that you knew well and know well and that we know really very little about except her uh, performances, and that would be Marlene Dietrich. Yes. What kind, what kind of woman is she? Well, she's um, the most loyal friend that anybody could ever ask for. Her, her loyalty is uh, ferocious, and uh, her professionalism is impeccable. She has a marvelous sense of humor. She was one of the all-time glamour people. And we did our magic show together, you know, for a long time. And uh, so we had a, not only a long friendship, but also a long professional association. Um, how would you compare what we are experiencing on television, or some these uh, prime time, well, they're called soaps, they're prime time dramas. I'm talking about Dynasty Dallas, uh, Falcon Crest. Well, they're soaps, come on. They're so. How would you compare There's nothing those? wrong with being a soap. It's a perfectly legitimate form. But isn't that exactly what you were doing on radio? Those. Uh... No, I acted in in soap operas in the day, to make my living. I, didn't I, know I that. did a lot of those. Uh, I I remember I played I played a cad in one of them. And I was trying to seduce a girl. It took us about thirteen weeks in one rumble seat, <laughs> to get anywhere. <laughs> But it was the same plot as we see on TV now. Yeah. But it isn't. My own show wasn't a soap opera. We did. Uh, we did um, the same kind of thing you make movies of, full-length stories. Right. You know, right. with only one commercial break. And you were what? Uh, at what age at that time? About twenty. Uh, I, I was young, 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 young. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all that success at that age, hard to handle or easy to handle? You know that this. Anybody who has trouble being successful doesn't have any sympathy from me. Uh, but at 22, <laughs> Orson, you, but were, I went, I, I you was were the a, child was success, genius of Broadway. I was a success at 16. Oh. I was a star in Dublin. So I was an old timer by then. And uh, I was just awful busy, right. you know, and awful lucky. I had a tremendous streak of luck, and I was very grateful for that because I, 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 I'm not being fake modest uh, talking about luck. I do really think it has everything to do with anybody's life. 